So let's have a look at some of the other things that have changed inside of EDIUS 8.3. For a start, up in the bin here, they've added in a new way of displaying the clips. So you've got your standard way, which has got your name at the top and picture underneath. But if you click on here, you can see you go to the tiles, which we had before. And then you go to this new one, which has actually got the name of the clip and the time code with a little thumbnail. Pop through that, you get to all the other views we had before. It's just we've got this one, which is new. And obviously you make things bigger and smaller, but you've got the time code there on the clips, which is nice. They've called this one tile, which is what that used to be called. This is now called thumbnail, that's called tile. It's a nice new view, so you've got a little bit more information about the clips. They've done some changes to do with proxies. Now Odius has got a proxy mode, and in a proxy mode what you do is you make low resolution versions of all of your clips, and then you edit with those. Now there's two ways of making the proxies, and it depends on a setting inside of your user settings. So let's go up to this user setting here and go to where it says proxy mode, and you have this tick box that says automatically generate proxies. In the default settings, that's on. Now if that's on, what happens is that when you go into proxy mode, so you come up to mode and then say proxy, if you haven't made your proxies already, that'll start making proxies for you. Now you might have noticed when I came between normal mode and proxy mode here, absolutely nothing happened to the picture. What did happen is down on the timeline, if you look at those clips, they suddenly get a cross hatch pattern over them, which means you're in proxy mode. Now, if you're in proxy mode and you've made some proxies, this will now be switching to your low resolution clips. And I haven't made any proxies for those, which is why you can't see any difference for the picture. Now, if that setting was ticked in the user settings, it would now be making the proxies and then use them as soon as they were made. Because I haven't got that ticked, I've got to manually make me proxies. So I'm going to come over to this shot from the Bluebell Railway, right click on it and say, create proxy. And now that's going to make a low resolution version of that clip. Already done it. And you'll notice up there, yep, it now looks a lot worse. Let's get out of proxy mode, oh, back to full resolution. In proxy mode, oh, low resolution, horrible. Now, why would you do that? It's so that you can play back things and edit things which your computer can't cope with otherwise. Imagine you're doing a big multi-camera uh, and you've got 15 different cameras you want to view and then cut between. Maybe your computer can't cope with it. But if you switch to using proxies, maybe it can. I'm always using the best computers because you know, I make computers for a living, so I've always got the best ones available. I don't tend to use proxy mode very much, but these days we're now getting 4K footage and 6K footage. These are all sorts of things that computers will find very, very hard to play back. So actually, more and more programs are actually putting proxy modes into them. It's just been added in to Adobe Premiere, for example. Edis has been doing it for ages, and that's how it works. You pop into proxy mode, you're using the proxies. The big difference we've got with 8.3 is that they've given you more options for the quality of these clips, because frankly, that looks flipping awful. That's a really low resolution clip. The advantage is it makes a very, very small file. So for example, if I was say using DV footage, a 13 gigabyte DV clip, the proxy would be about six or 700 megabytes. I'd then use those really small versions to go onto a laptop where I had a limited amount of space and I could actually edit stuff on a laptop in low resolution and then pop back to the full resolution ones later on. But now computers have got better and hard drives, there's more space in them, we can go to better qualities. So let's go into the settings, system, application, proxy. And you can see here I've got three different quality settings. Now what I've been told about these settings is that the large produces a file which is 1920 1080. The medium produces something which is half of that, 960 by 540. And the small one does what it does all the time, which was 352 by 288. Medium is now the default, so your default resolution for proxies is 960 so that's going to be half of HD. So basically you take a 4K clip, it'll make it into a half HD clip. You take a, an HD clip, it makes it into a half HD clip. That's the default, and it produces a much nicer looking shot than that one. So let's pop out of that, let's go to this shot, whack it onto the timeline. It's not a proxy yet, but let's say make proxy. Now it says something's going on down there, it's already disappeared. And let's go from this clip, which was the original low resolution version, to this clip, which is now a half HD version. You'll notice it's an awful lot better. Obviously it's not as good as the original, 
because I've made a proxy. That's what proxies are meant to be. But it's made something that's smaller and easier to deal with. Now, obviously, you can change the setting. So if I go into system settings and change it, now all the proxies you make will be large. It's now going to make me an HD size clip from my HD size original. Not necessarily the sort of thing I'd do if I'm using HD, but if I was using 4K, then maybe I would make an HD original. It's going to look still very good, but easier to deal with. Having changed that, it does not change the proxies I've already made. Those two are going to stay the same. If I go back to the clip in the bin and right click on it, I cannot create a new proxy file. What I've actually got to do is go and delete the proxy files that have been created. So let me right click on that clip and say Explorer and it'll take me to the folder where that clip is. And in that folder you can see I've got the original, I've got the waveform cache file and I've got the proxy. Let me just pop into details view. You can see how much smaller the proxy is than the original. It's two megabytes. Well, that's two megabytes on the really, really small setting. Let's get rid of it. Delete the thing. Go back to ODS. Oh, no proxy anymore. I'll automatically use the real thing. Right click. Create. Now my proxy here is now set to its highest quality setting. So now I've got a high quality proxy there. And yeah, I actually can't really tell the difference between that and let's pop out of proxy mode. That, there'll be a jolly good reason for that. That's because it's HD. So it hasn't lost any resolution. It's been compressed in a different way, so there might be something else, but actually it looks pretty much the same as the original. Let me bring up that folder again. And you can see, yep, I've got a new proxy file there made up. But if I have a look at it, it's still half the size of the original, but it's quite close. And that's because this is using the large setting. Let me delete that, go into the settings, put it onto medium, which is the default, create the proxy again, wait for it to happen. Oh, done it already. And now, as long as I'm in proxy mode, you'll notice the quality there has dropped. Full quality, proxy quality. There is a difference. The proxy is not quite as good. They're easier to deal with, and the file is smaller. The file is only 8 megabits. And that's the big thing. That's the thing to change on proxy mode. It's gone from proxies that were, okay, really, really small, but really pretty awful to deal with into some reasonable sized proxies. You can get a button to pop up in various places. So, for example, I would get one to pop up on the mode bar here. Let's go to settings and then user settings, interface, and then button, mode bar, and there's a proxy mode button. So let's shove that in there. And now you can see I've got a button there so I can switch between proxy mode and full mode at the click of a button. I was doing a music video recently for somebody. We filmed the entire thing in 4K. We were having several layers of 4K all being merged together, which my computer here can cope with two layers of 4K. It can't really cope with five. And I was doing that on some occasions. So I used this playback resolution here to drop the playback resolution to help me out. But I could have used proxy mode as well and then I'd be able to get even better performance whilst I was doing the edit. So I could just edit the whole thing in proxies and then just turn off proxy mode and then just render it out of full quality. Nice and easy to do. If you look closely at that proxy mode button, you notice there's a little drop down next to it, which actually gives you the option to create proxies as well. You can see the options are create all proxies, create proxies for what's in the bin or create proxies for what's on the timeline. The timeline one will do proxies for whatever timelines are open. So I've got three different timelines open here. It'll make proxies for the lot. If I just had one timeline open, it will just make the proxies for that timeline. Obviously doing the bin will create the stuff in the bin and doing all will create proxies for everything. There is actually an option for this on the menu as well. You just go to file and then from here, create proxy. And you've got the same options here of all, bin and timeline. Now I'm going to get out of Edius and I'm going to go to my folder full of stuff. And I'm just going to search for proxies and delete the ones that I've made. So now I've got no proxies. And the other thing I'm going to do is rename one of my clips. Now inside of Edius, Okay, I've got no proxies and I've now got a big hole where that clip used to be because I renamed it and it can't find it. Pretty obvious you might say that happens all the time. Let me open up the restore offline clips dialog box. So what I normally do is I select all the clips and then click on the restoration method and go off to try and link it up to the clips and you'll notice doing that I, it says do nothing. 
Why is that? It's because when you're trying to restore offline clips, you can't restore the proxies. So my proxy is missing and my original is missing. And I could restore the original. I could just click on this and they say select folder. Find the folder where it's stored and normally it would link it back up again. Now in my case it won't because I've actually renamed the file. So instead what I've got to do is go and navigate to the folder where the clip is and actually select the renamed file to link it up again. Again, that's pretty normal. But I can't relink this thing. I can't relink the proxy. Your options are delete proxy or do nothing. It's been like this in EDIUS for years, but it's one thing to bear in mind if you do start using proxies. Once you've got some offline clips and you try and just select the lot to restore it, the only option you have is do nothing. You've got to make sure you don't select the proxies, just select the high res ones, link those up and ignore the proxies. If you need the proxies, remake them. Of course, as I sell computers, I don't think you should use proxy mode. I think you should come to us and buy a nice new fancy computer that's powerful enough to do whatever you want. I think you should be buying new computers from us every other week. I tend to turn off automatically generate proxy because I don't like it making proxies just because I pressed the proxy button. I only want to make proxies up of the clips that I am using. And then what I'll do is I'll just select the clips that I want to make proxies out of, right click and say create proxy, and then let it get on with it. It'll do that in the background so I can carry on editing with the high res clips until the proxies are made. You'll notice down here you have something saying it's actually making proxies and how many it's making. If you go to view and then background jobs, you can see the proxies being made up and how fast it's doing them. And it does it pretty quickly. Obviously, it depends on how big the clip is and how fast your computer is. Proxy mode is useful because you can edit stuff on a computer that's not quite as powerful just by using proxies.